Hello, my name is Brian James Shanley, and I'm coming to you today very briefly to talk about the Trinity, the triune nature of the God of Christianity. We live in a time in which in neo-evangelical circles, that is to say, mainstream Christianity, professing Christianity in America, has embraced something of an, uh, of an internal agnosticism of sorts, uh, they call it the non-denominationalist movement, in which if you go to a person and say, hey, what kind of church do you go to? Historically, people would say with pride, uh, I belong to a Baptist church or a Methodist or an Episcopalian or we're Pentecostals or whatever. You know, kind of like I'm from the street and we used to say, claim your set. You know, let people know where you stand and take some kind of pride in that. You know, uh, take some kind of ownership. Be a man. Be a woman. Today, uh, with postmodernism and radical feminism, etc., in the secular world, it has come into the church, and people have decided that the best way to get people into my building, to get people sitting in my seats, to get money coming in on my collection plate, I have to be as universal and broad as possible. Therefore, I can't take a stand on this subject can't take a stand on that subject. Why? Because someone who doesn't hold to my position on that subject is going to feel like leaving. They're not going to be my friend anymore. They're not going to be happy. I want people happy and I want people to be my friend. So the best thing I can do is stand for nothing. So you see people nowadays, what church do you go to? I go to a non-denominational church. They're saying it with their nose in the air as though they're saying the hippest and the most cutting edge and the most trendy thing possible. When in reality, A, what they're saying is not cutting edge, it's cowardice. B, there's no such thing as non-denominationalism. A denomination is a school of thought inside of the Christian world. So when you say, I'm non-denominationalist, I say, thank you for telling me which denomination you belong to. Well, what are you talking about? I don't belong to one. Yes, you belong to the non-denominationalist movement, the non-denominationalist school of thought within Christianity, non-denominationalism is your denomination. And the third problem with that really is that if I were to ask you about five or six quick questions, I could see very plainly what school of thought in Christianity did influence you, and I could pigeonhole you, and I could literally find out what denomination you are. Everybody holds to a school of thought, unless you have no opinion about God. No opinion about Jesus. No opinion about the Bible. No opinion about salvation. If you're willing to say, I have no opinion about these things at all, you're a non-denominationalist. But if you have an opinion about these things, how is one saved? Do you know, on what basis does one go to heaven, etc.? Very quickly, we can ask you a few questions, and we'll know where you stand. Is God sovereign over all things? Or maybe he's sovereign over everything except the will of man. Oh, I wanted to save people. That just didn't work out. <laughs> and you have a God like that who is dependent on man's ability and willingness to respond to his gospel. Um, I mean, I ask you a few questions. If I flap my lips, does reality have to conform to what I've said and cash have to show up simply because I said so? Does Jesus give me the power to, to get Western materialism? Things like that. I ask you a few questions, I'll find out. If I put my hand on your head and say, shakalaka, shakalaka, yo quiero Taco Bell, are you going to fall on the floor and bark like a dog? Okay, I can, I can tell you where you stand if I ask you certain questions. But anyways, in this non-denominationalist, cowardice type of environment we find ourselves in, where people want to be friendly and open to the point of even being willing to compromise on some of the essential pieces of Christianity, those things that make Christianity Christianity. Some people are willing to pretend they don't exist to make their neighbor happy if their neighbor's a non-Christian. There's a church in North Minneapolis that is going to open the mic to the official spokesperson of Louis Farrakhan of the Black Muslim Movement. Is this historically Baptist church renouncing Jesus Christ? Are they endorsing Elijah Muhammad, Louis Farrakhan? Wallace Farad Muhammad, the Quran, etc., all this wickedness, they must be if they're willing to let the sheep sit at the feet of this kind of devilment. But anyways, we're going to isolate this 
I could go on about this all day. Let me step down from the soapbox. I want to talk to you about the Trinity. Uh, one eternal being that exists simultaneously as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Where monotheists, not tritheists, not polytheists, monotheists, we hold the one God. It's just that this one God exists in a multi-personal way. And I want to give you a way for you to articulate it if you're a Christian and you've wanted to put this into words to your non-Christian friends who have questions. Don't you believe in three gods? Or all that stuff. Or maybe you're a Christian and you're struggling with it in here yourself. Maybe you're a non-Christian, but that triune nature of God issue, that Godhead issue, has gotten in the way and it's become a stumbling block. I'm about to make it plain in a way you've never seen before. And I'm hoping that you'll share this video with other folk. Obviously, it's for free. I don't want a dime from you. I'm simply one beggar trying to tell another beggar where he was able to find some bread at. All right? And if you'll listen for a minute, it's an exchange. You promise me your attention. I promise you the payoff that you're going to receive is education. I cannot take credit for this illustration because I got it from Dr. Walter Ralston Martin, author of Kingdom of the Cults. Uh, things of that nature. In his book, Essential Christianity, he talks about the triple point of water and uses it beautifully to illustrate the Trinity. I'm going to borrow from that, you know, obviously give a Brian Shanley paraphrase of it, but all of a sudden you're going to have an epiphany moment where the light's going to go on and you're going to understand uh, exactly what's happened. Uh, picture this. Say I have an ice cube. All right, that's my ice cube. All right, it's one solid ice. It's not five ice cubes. It's not three ice cubes. It's one. Let's say I put that ice cube in the frying pan and put it on the stove and turn the range all the way to hot. What's going to happen to that ice cube? Two things. First and foremost, it's going to start to melt. So we're going to have some liquid happening. Am I right? But also... A little bit of steam and a little bit of vapor is going to come up, right? So you're going to have that ice cube. There's going to be a little bit of vapor or whatever you want to call it. But of course, it always existed as a solid. There's going to come a time in which the one ice cube exists simultaneously as a vapor, as a solid, and as a liquid. Now, what if some moron looked into your frying pan and said, Check out the three ice cubes! You'd say, well, you're stupid. That ain't three ice cubes. It's one ice cube. No, don't you see the water? Don't you see the vapor? <laughs> don't you see the liquid? That's three ice cubes. No, the one ice cube exists simultaneously in three different ways. One ice cube, multi-existence here. Now, when you take that and apply it to the Bible... H2O is the simplest of all the elements in the created universe. Yet if it can exist that way at a given temperature, it's logical to conclude that the one who made all things could exist that way. One eternal being, three centers of consciousness operating simultaneously. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Stare at this, um, memorize it, and be ready to use it anytime the Trinity's not making sense or you hear some oneness Pentecostal or some Jehovah's Witness or some other cultist. You believe in multiple gods. No, we don't. No more than someone looking at a melting and vaporizing ice cube believes in three different ice cubes. No, it's one ice cube existing in three different ways. The one God exists simultaneously as three different centers of consciousness. There is a person called God the Father. There's a person called God the Son. There's a person called God the Holy Spirit. Three in one, one in three. Praise be the name of the exalted Trinity. Now, you're asking me, okay, I heard there's some press in the community. You separated from a denomination called the Church of God and Christ. Based on this, based on their willingness to worship alongside of Oneness Pentecostal, Jesus-only, so-called apostolics. Why? Because they reject the Trinity. They think it's 
one being that's worn multiple masks. So if I'm functioning as God the Father, all of a sudden I put on a suit and I'm God the Son. I go up, I put on another suit, and I come back as the Holy Spirit. Some of them have borrowed from the Jehovah's Witnesses, and they don't think he put on a suit to be the Holy Spirit. They think the Holy Spirit is a force that comes from the Aryan cults like the Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, the Armstrong Movement, uh, Worldwide Church of God, things of that nature. Um, but uh, this is a heresy. You have to believe in the Trinity. How you believe about God, you will go to heaven or hell based on whether or not you accept the Trinity. Oh, he's making too much. He's making a mountain out of a molehill. Being too dogmatic about something that's not that big a deal. With all the people suffering today, can't the church just come together? <laughs> I advise you to open your Bible and look at Job chapter 42, verse 7. My wrath is kindled against you and against your two friends... Why? On what basis is God angry? Because you have not spoken of me what is right. You have not put forth what is factually accurate and theologically right about my nature, my essence, my attributes, etc. God cares very much about how you think about him and how you speak about him. Why? Because it affects how you worship him and how you serve him. So, if God has revealed himself to be X, and you decide, well, the cult leader says, I need to uh, receive him as Y, and you receive Y when God says X, it's an act of rebellion. If God says, you know, I'm this, and you say, no, he's that, because my favorite guy on television says so, you are in rebellion against God as he has revealed himself. Okay? If you're willing to worship alongside of pray with, etc. People who reject the Trinity, reject the way that God has revealed himself. It's going to be an ugly day for you when you get judged and I don't want to be within 20 feet of you. You hear what I'm saying? But I hope that something was said that helped you. Again, one ice cube when it begins to melt will have some liquid, will have some vapor, but still not be all the way melted. Will exist simultaneously as vapor, solid, and liquid, or steam, solid, and liquid. It is not three ice cubes. It is but one ice cube. We do not serve three gods. We simply serve one god. One god has revealed himself in three different subsistences, three different centers of consciousness. Um, and we do praise the exalted triune god. I hope this illustration is helpful, and uh, any uh, editorialized comments I've made about the condition of the church, uh, things of that nature, you could do your own research on. Uh, you will find that sometimes people, in order to attract a sellout crowd, they're willing to sell out the gospel, sell out God himself in the way he's revealed himself. And I respectfully and humbly plead with you not to be counted alongside those who reject God and who rebel against how he has chosen to reveal himself. Who's more qualified to talk about who God is God himself, or Joe Schmo that has the apostolic temple on the corner? The church, by the creek, by the whatever. You know what I'm saying? I don't think the choice could be much clearer. And I do uh, hope and pray that something was said that causes the light to go on. And if this was helpful to you, then pass it on to other folk. And if you would comment on it, I would love to see what the YouTube universe is saying about what this has done for folk. Uh, may God bless and keep you and your families, and we'll talk again.